working on this ant colony pitted against another ant colony and building this beautiful bomb. Uh, so the one part that I wasn't sure we were going to be able to do was to make little miniature ants and I wanted this feel of an infestation. I really feel like we captured just the essence of the flow and the movement of the ants by just focusing on the silhouettes of the ants as opposed to getting bogged down by the appendages. Um, so we were able to make like 25 of the ants a day which thrills me because William and I had been wanting to make 20 ants and we weren't sure if that was going to be able to be done. What we knew was going to be able to be done and be gorgeous was the ant bomb. We brought down these beautiful um, chunks of our recycled process of copper and started bringing them and introducing them into the interior of the bomb. Coming down here and having three sessions, you really start to understand the vocabulary of glass making and also what the glass makers are capable of and how they work with their materials. Um, so this time we were able to make objects a lot quicker than we were at the Cooper Hewitt because we were we had chosen a very laborious project up there. Um, we started to work on this technique of the parasol and this, this uh, merger of a webbed foot and and a parasol, but uh, one great thing about the glass is that it's a very quick process, so you can see your results right away. And I wasn't really interested in the direction that it was going. It was, it was, it started to get more removed from the from an object that I was interested in. One thing that I was finding with the glass is that if you are able to communicate through a sketch or through like with dynamite, it's a very specific, um, a very specific object rather than something that's. Uh, more conceptual, it's easier for the designers to understand exactly what you want and communicate that. And uh, when, when you're not exactly clear and you want to just sort of explore, you get a lot of exploring.